Right, okay, so um, I did promise that there was going to be more, so um, here goes. Tonight, I'll, I just wanted to very quickly speak to you about not giving up. The Bible says in the book of Galatians chapter 6, I believe it's in verse 9, where it says, Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall obtain a reward if you faint not. It says... Galatians chapter 6 Be not weary in well doing, for you shall obtain a reward if you think not. The reason why I want to share this with you is because sometimes we lose perspective. Sometimes we're so weighed down by the things that we see people living in church, people not making as much progress as they want to make. We get worried about things. We get worried about our children, our marriages, our friends. We get worried about relatives. We get worried about all sorts of things, our jobs and so on. But most importantly, we get worried about our place before the Father. We think about the Father in the context of judgment. We think about when we will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And make no mistake, we will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. But here's the thing. We worry about that which we should not worry about. We are scared and concerned that we have not done well enough before God. Forgetting that the Bible says to us that we should not judge before the time. Do not judge before the time. Why? Because it is not your job to judge. It is God's job to judge. It is Jesus' job to judge and to dish out reward. Here's the thing. You have not failed until you quit. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you will receive a reward, if you faint not, if you do not quit, if you do not give up. That is the only premise under which you are deemed to have failed, when you quit. An image comes to mind just as, like I say, as I say that, about a frog whose head is stuck in the throat of a bird and you can see the frog holding the throat of the bird and absolutely refusing to give in i want you to understand this that until jesus calls you home until your time on this planet is done don't quit you have not failed see if you look in the book of revelation the chapters 2 and 3 when Jesus wrote the church, the letters to the seven churches to some of the churches he said nothing bad about them the church of Smyrna comes to mind for some of the churches like Laodicea he said nothing good for some other churches like the church at Ephesus he said mostly good stuff but then he had a problem with one or two things that they had not done right but in no case in any of the churches did God say I've given up on you. I've completely lost faith and hope in you. Why? Because their time was not yet done. And that's the reason why in each of these letters Jesus said, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. In other words, your time is not yet done. Listen to my instruction and live your life thereby. So, in conclusion, what I'm saying is this. Do you see in yourself, in your conduct, in your ministry? Do you see in how you relate with others, in how you are doing the job that God called you to do? Do you see at any point in time things that you can and should do better, then start doing them better. If you know to do them better, start doing them better. If there are things you see in yourself that you are, no, you are now already doing well, then persist in them. The Bible says in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4, it says, take heed to yourself. Pay careful attention to yourself in view of the doctrine. Continue thou in them, for in so doing you will save both yourself and them that hear you. You will save both yourself and them that hear you. Don't quit. God's not giving up on you yet. Do not quit. The only person who wants you to quit is the devil. Why? Because he knows once you get depressed, 
Once you start to focus on the things you have not done, once you start to focus on your seeming failures or your seeming failings, not that word I'm using, seeming, apparent, not real, but it appears to be so. Once you start to focus on those things, you will get discouraged. You will get depressed. You will get down. You will become downtrodden. You will lose focus on the things that God has called you to do. And you will start to worry about the things you have not yet done. Friends, look up. Christ is coming soon. Start to do the things that you know to do that you have not done. And the things that you're already doing, keep doing them well. Above all, never give up. Why? Because in due season, your reward comes. Don't be faced by the things you see. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, it says, For we walk by faith. By faith, not by sight. We do not walk by the things that we see. We walk by the things that we do not see. Why? Because we believe in a God who we cannot see. So, reality is out there. Reality is what you cannot see. What you can see is a stubbornly persistent illusion. According to a certain guy called Albert Einstein. So, guess what? Don't quit. Don't quit. I'll see you later. There's more things that I would like to share with you, especially as to why you should believe God's word. How that God's word is so real and you can actually prove it. You can prove that God's word is his word. You can prove that God's word, God wrote himself. He may have used some guys. He may have spoken through some guys, about 40 of them, over the space of several thousands of years. But the point of the matter is you can see God's handwriting, God's authentication, God's self-authentication of his word. I'll share that with you at some point in the future. God bless you. Bye.